Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. It's great to have you join us again. I am Taya Salam. This is what the show looks like. Starting off with great news coming from the Tokyo Paralympics where Nigeria's medal tally is up to eight after Yukira Yazi won bronze in the women's shot put event. Also on the program, Cristiano Ronaldo breaks the world record for goals scored in men's international football. And last but not the least, um, Coco Golf is out of the U.S. Open after losing to 2017 champion Slow Stevens in a second round matchup. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot to come on the show. Just try and stick with us for the next one hour. Welcome back. It's time to check in at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics uh, where Team Nigeria continues to um, rise on the medals table. Uh, like I said, they've now won eight medals after Ukaria Iazi won bronze in the women's shot put event. That's a confirmation. Uh, in a seated shot put final, uh, she won bronze in the class F. 57. So congratulations uh, once again uh, to Nigeria. I'm not on this uh, coverage alone. I've got uh, Jide Olanero uh, joins me on a Thursday. Uh, typically joins on a Friday, but uh, this week is on a Thursday. Oh, it's all good, right? It's good. It's good, good, to, be, it's good to be around today also. It's yeah. good, really nice In, to be on the set with you. Indeed. Uh, quickly, let's talk about uh, Ikeria. Uh, first uh, track and field medal mm -hmm. at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics are uh, coming courtesy of the short put events. Yeah, good. Uh, of course, like I said, I remember I said that, uh, that when you look at where the strength of this particular team is, mm -hmm. powerlifting, maybe table tennis as yeah. well as athletics. And right. uh, we talk about the track and field uh, uh, with what uh, Ukraine has done, has been able to do, shows that um, maybe we can still get one or two more mm. in, in, in that particular area. And uh, good that she's registering uh, her name on the medals chart now. Incredible. F fantastic adding to the all. Um, one would have expected that um, the last time out, it, it was eight gold mm. that this time around. Nah, it's not going to match that. But, but we're exactly not going to match that. We will match that. But nah. we must still give it to them, give it to of the course. athletes. Um, They've been able to show the stuff they are made of. Mm -hmm. They uh, I salute the courage, I salute the determination on the mm -hmm. part of the these athletes, of mm -hmm. course, for doing what um, you would say the um, the able body can yep. do. Yeah, um, you, yep. you can say that again. Uh, yes, that's yes, the, yes. that's just the way it is. Uh, our congratulations uh, once again uh, to you, Keria uh, Iyazi, on winning that bronze medal for the country, uh, which takes a uh, medal count to eight. Uh, Previous medals coming from the likes of uh, Tijani Latifat, Omalaya Bosse, as also uh, Olafemi Ayo for uh, with a world record uh, in the powerlifting. Shout out to you wherever you are right now. Obiji Loveland as well to won a medal for the country. That was a silver medal. Lucky, Lucy HK, pardon me, uh, the evergreen Lucy. Mm -hmm. uh, she said before the competition started uh, that the COVID really affected our preparations. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, she had to really... Most of them, right? So uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate for most of them, especially for the likes of Lucy mm. and uh, you know even Lovely. Some Lovely of them would have well. would loved to Could have gone, gone exactly yeah. because that is um, that's the, the the level they are really. Mm. When you look at them, they they've really given it all. Mm. Uh, we've seen them do this maybe at the Commonwealth. We've seen them do you know they are different um, events. Events. Yeah. So I'm not. I, 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 I would say uh, I'm not disappointed. Though. No. I know that for them, they would say, they, just like yes, they've explained that right. they would have loved to do more, right. especially when the expectations is high. You just don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. you, you know, from, you know, you you don't want to drop the ball. You nope. know, yeah, but, uh, you, you you the last time out, you want a gold. Mm -hmm. You don't you want to you, exactly. You don't want to yeah. do less. Win gold you don't again. want to perform less. You just want to because that's yeah. where you belong. So I understand, and I just hope that they will get more encouragement. Mm -hmm. And again, I think. Um, it's um, um, maybe going forward, 
there is need to do more championships mm. for you of know course. this particular you know, course, people. Yeah. We need to begin to discover more uh, because for some of the likes of Adisha Kong, I know mm. that they would soon be retired. They've been around They've forever. Been around for, so we yeah. will just be. We need to do more. Um, we need to organize more competitions, focus mm. more on these people, mm. and so that we can discover more. So we, if we do more, if we throw up a lot of talents, yep. then we should be doing more on the medals table. We mm. should be doing exactly. We should and be I'll having a lot of presence on the medals table, yeah. really, because that's uh, that means that we need to do more for them. Mm. Really, mm. we need to. The, the sport that should be. Like I said, maybe um, I would have expected the sport minister to be there, maybe that, so that he will see the need mm -hmm. for uh, when they come back home for yeah, well, I every, all hands to be on deck. He's got his people there. I imagine he's following every uh, bit of action as well, so going on. Uh, but people the, might want to question that. Uh, why is it not there? Right? That, right? If you were there, the last one, why, <laughs> why not there this time uh, around? Yeah. What's the difference, you know? Yeah. What's the difference, you know? All right, um, so that's it. Uh, shout out as well to Ibrahim Olaita uh, winning uh, a medal for Nigeria. That was a bronze as well, too, in the women's uh, 67 kg category for power lifting. And the men's table tennis team as well uh, got a bronze uh, in the class 9 to 10 for team table tennis. Shout out to all of these guys. Uh, congratulations. Uh, once again, uh, we can't wait to have you back home. You can be a part of the show as well. You can talk to us on channels, uh, not channel sports. Uh, you can talk to us on sport this morning at channelstv.com. That's our mail. That's the way you can reach us and let us know. Uh, talk to us about the performance of Team Nigeria at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics uh, as well. Cristiano Ronaldo's got a lot of fans in Nigeria. How are you feeling this morning after how he's broken the world record for goals scored in men's international football? I, I want to believe... Uh, uh, you're very, very happy and delighted uh, on the show this morning. The Super Eagles of Nigeria will be in action as well tomorrow against Liberia in the World Cup qualifier. Uh, tell us uh, your expectations uh, for that particular game. We'll try to take all of your messages before the end of the show. Let's move away from the tennis court now to the basketball court. Uh, the action still going on at the FIBA Afro Basket. Nigeria is out of the competition, but then the competition goes on. We have our two first semi-finalists already. I know Senegal expectedly advancing uh, into the last four of the competition. They took on Angola and they won pretty. Uh, it was a tough game. Uh, they won by five points, 79 to 74. The second semi-finalist is Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire defeated Nigeria in the pool stage and they absolutely destroyed Guinea by 98 to 50. So it's going to be Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire meeting in the first semifinals of the FIBA Afro Basket. Action will continue today. This time around, it's going to be the defending champions, Tunisia, taking on South Sudan. We expect the Tunisians to advance in that particular matchup. Cape Verde, they're on the rise when it comes to basketball on the continent. They'll be slugging it out against Uganda. Austin. Quick one on the FIBA Afro basket. I know it's a bit difficult talking about it because of Nigeria's performance, which wasn't great at all. But uh, your overall thoughts on Nigeria's campaign? Yeah, but not difficult for me, Tayo, because, you know, I said no surprises with the way we already put that team together. I said that uh, we were already, you know, planning to fail. So we went there and we failed. And Cote d'Ivoire just confirmed that their victory over Nigeria was no fluke, you know. Mm -hmm. Still empowering on, you know, getting to um, the semis. And then, of course, um, Uganda might just prove, prove the same, you know, uh, today when they take on Cape Verde. And that's a game Nigeria should watch. They shouldn't say because they are no more in the Afro basket because they will be playing Uganda and Cape True. Verde in the qualifiers. So uh, they must watch that one and see ways that they can fix some of their problems. I'm also, um, in a way, pleased with Senegal, you know, showing good character to beat Angola. We know what Angola has done with basketball, their investment in the league and all. But today, um, let's see uh, what's going to happen in that mm. Tunisia match. I know easily everyone would give it, you already, the way you called it for Tunisia, but um, mm. this is basketball and, and it's beginning to show uh, some level of should I say, um, what you cannot call, it's looking like it's not 
the way it used to be back in the day. You can just easily predict it. That's the line I'm looking for. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see. We'll wait to see what, what they're going to do. But um, big, big lessons for, for, for the D Tigers and this Afro basket experience. I hope we yes. learn from it. I hope we learn from it. Uh, that's the message uh, coming from Austin. And of course, a lot of Nigerians uh, this uh, morning, uh, the qualifiers for the World Cup will start in earnest uh, November. Uh, so they need to start putting their houses, housing order uh, for those games against Mali, Cape Verde, and Uganda. Let's get on uh, away from basketball now. Uh, big events went down yesterday in Ibadan. Uh, that's uh, the launching of the, of the new Lake Consolami Stadium, uh, where Governor of your state, uh, Shea Makide, uh, commissioned uh, the new Luke Stadium in Damasingba, Ibadan State. Uh, capital, the commissioning ceremony of the stadium, which is 10,000 capacity uh, with the state of the art facilities had in attendance. The chairman of the Southwest Governors Forum, Rosemi Akredolu, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki, as well as Nigerian uh, Football Federation Vice President Sheyi Akiomi, and others. Everything that went down yesterday during the launching of the Lake on Salam Stadium is contained in this report. This stadium in Adama Simba in Ibado was first commissioned on May the 28th, 1988 and was named Lekon Salami in honor of Chief Lekon Salami, Nigerian businessman, football administrator. It's a different story today as the once abandoned 10,000 capacity stadium, which is the pride of Oyo State and home to shooting stars of Ibadan, is wearing a look with the state of the art facilities, all thanks to the governor of the state, Shea Makinde. We decided to uh, set this uh, up, and I'm glad that today almost 10,000 of our youth are in this stadium. And we're not just uh, fixing Adama Singa. We have various projects similar to this in all the geopolitical for your state. I must say that the speed with which he co has completed the refurbishment of this stadium is remarkable. For us, Governors, we mark ourselves by a peer reviewing ourselves. We do what we call peer reviews. When we see something good in one state, we go to our states. Oh my God! The referee, referee said that the goal was played. The state governor, Shane McIndae, scored the first goal at the newly renovated stadium in a novelty match against ex-internationals of the Super Eagles before the state-owned club 3SC faced Slovakia's club side Tabor Sazana in a thrilling international friendly to mark the reopening of the 33-year-old stadium. The stadium, according to the state government, aside from being an athletic or sports ground, will be a top revenue generating source for the state, providing employment opportunities for the people of Oyo State. There you go, that's the reopening of the Lake on Salami Stadium in Ibadan State. A fantastic uh, edifice. Uh, Hopefully, they can make a good use of it and they can maintain it properly as well, too. Bada Kitsunde Johnson now joins us. Uh, Bada is going to be with us for the rest of the show. Bada, good morning. It's always a delight to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Good morning. Good morning. Now, it's a quick one on the, on the reopening of the stadium. I mean, stadium looks great, fantastic. Uh, 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 shooting stars will likely play uh, the home matches there if they get or when they get promoted. Uh, to the Nigerian Professional Football League? Well, the facility looks good. Um, I've seen several videos of it on, on social media. It does look really impressive, but I was a bit worried when I saw uh, footages from the game much later yesterday, um, and it did look like there hadn't been adequate um, concentration made for drainage. But um, having said that, I think we, we have to give credit to the, to the gov governor, government um, of your state, 
mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the governor and the commissioner for sport who have prioritized uh, the local team and uh, providing them with the modern facilities to, to, to play from. Um, I mean, obviously, as he said, we hope that isn't the only thing that uh, they focus on, having delivered the stadium now, uh, to ensure that sport development is the key focus. And um, facility provision is, is just one of the um, imperatives that have to be attended to you know, when, when you're talking about um, real sport development, tangible sport development. Um, it, has, you know, you know, it, it doesn't stop with just... Um, creating um, a decent enough playing surface. You've got to look at human capital development, uh, grassroots development, how the people who want to end up playing for super, uh, for uh, shooting stars in the next five, 10 years, mm -hmm. how do they come through um, the, you know, the, the age cadre and also have facilities uh, to nurture their talent um, right. away from the, you know, the main football pitch? You're spot on, Bada, nothing more to add to it. Let's get on with the show now and uh, go to the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, matches have already started, uh, including Nigeria's group. We have the results for you. I will take them before I go to Bada and uh, Austin as well as uh, Jide in the studio. Let's give you the results so quickly coming from group where you have Nigeria. It's uh, the Central African Republic. Uh, they were in action against uh, Cape Verde. That game ended 1-1. So if Nigeria can get all three points uh, against uh, Liberia tomorrow, it will be a great way to start the World Cup qualifiers second round. Group E, Mali went in action. It was a 1-0 win for them over Rwanda. Group F, Egypt defeated Angola by a long goal without Mo Salah. Libya were also in action against uh, Gabon. They ended 2-1 in favor of the Libyans. Group H, Ard Senegal with a 2-0 win over Togo. Sadio Mane uh, on the score sheet for the Senegalese. And in Group I, it's Guinea-Bissau and Guinea playing a one-all draw. Um, back to you quickly. Any surprises are from this result, Ajide? No, not really. Especially all the Omas no, won almost. their game. Okay. So, uh, but back to the one that really interests me and uh, have connection is the, 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 the game between Central African Republic and, and Cape Verde. Uh, and Cape Verde. Mm. Um, one, one. one one is then that that shows that if Nigeria, the Super Eagles of Nigeria can uh, do a, a good job mm. uh, tomorrow at um, the Tessilin Balogun Stadium, mm. a victory takes them to three, mm -hmm. and at least that gives them like a two, uh, two point points advantage, advantage yeah. while before the second uh, um, uh, match day. That would be fantastic. So, so that's, yeah. that's good. That's good indeed. Uh, Bada, back to you uh, quickly. Um, maximum points from the two games would have been a disappointment in the first place. Um, mm. And so the stage is set, I mean, the stage is set for the Super Eagles to um, capitalize on drop points on, on the part of the two other teams that played yesterday, Cape Verde and Central Africa Republic, um, starting from tomorrow against um, Liberia. So um, I'm sure that the Super Eagles and the managers um, understand the minimum expectation from that game, maximum points. Yeah. Great performance. Um, Lagos fans, we know, historically, have always been impatient. So they better be uh, calling <laughs> early. Stop fast. And, yeah, and calming those nerves. Um, and again, um, scoring early, the team psychologically, apart from, you know, sort of uh, placating the fans or maybe making the fans happy, um, psychologically, it also uh, gives you something to go and build on. Um, because the, the longer you go in the game without getting a goal, the more confident your position gets, the more comfortable they get in the, in the, you know, in, 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 uh, on a, on an away pitch. And um, yeah. you know, as you said, looking through the results, there has been no upsets yet. Mm. Um, in recent history, Sierra Leone have come here and come back from four down. Mm. Um, so you know, you don't want to leave any chance for your position to start to get confident and comfortable in, in your, uh, on your home turf. So I do hope that, you know, the Super Eagles start quickly tomorrow for their own good. Um, it will help to get the, the, the fans on site. But most importantly, you know, it would, you know, from the, the platform or the pedestal on which to build confidence, um, play, you know, so, sort of relaxed um, and express themselves and, 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 and play to the optimal capacity that they can deliver. So um, I'm looking forward to a great game. Um, I'm going to be there at the, at the stadium tomorrow yeah. to enjoy the Super Eagles. Um, yeah, so play and win over. 
All right, you're spot on there. I, I'll come back to you shortly. Uh, Austin as well, I'm coming back to you now. But before then, uh, let's uh, take a listen to the post uh, pre match thoughts of Gena Ra ahead of the game against Liberia tomorrow. For the moment, we don't think on Cap Verde because we have the first game here, Liberia. We will have 29 players and we only focus on this game. Of course, in our head, that's why we are 29 players to replace the eight UK players who has to leave us. But for the moment, we concentrate on the first game and then we will have around 20 players or 21 even for the second game. It will be another step, but at first, let's concentrate, let's focus on this wonderful match against Liberia. I know that some supporters can come, unfortunately not everybody, we are only 5,000, but we want to, to give them joy, and we know that all Nigeria is behind the team. Ghana Ross, very good coach, fully focused on the game against Liberia, it's one game at a time, after defeating Liberia, then they can start talking about uh, Cape Verde on Tuesday. Austin Okonapan is still with us as well. So, Austin, your quick uh, uh, you know, thoughts on this particular game before we move on, on the show. Yeah, I'm glad that the technical crew of the Super Eagles are not, you know, blinking about this one against Liberia. Uh, they understand that they cannot afford to, you know, have any room for complacency because we saw what happened against Sierra Leone. And each time uh, Nigerian football fans, you know, talk about... Uh, that game is a reminder that they're not going to accept it anymore. And we got to be careful because when you look at a group that's got Nigeria, Central Republic, uh, Africa, and um, Liberia, Cape Verde, easily you just want to go to sleep that Nigeria will take it. But football isn't like that anymore. Uh, in the last six years, Cape Verde have done so good with their football. They've been on a, on a constant rise. And so these guys, whenever they meet teams that are better than them, they get motivated to, you know, mm. want to do the best. So let's see how it goes. And we just want to wish uh, the Super Eagles all the best against Liberia. It's important they win that one, you mm -hmm. know, to build, you know, their confidence as they go forward. All right. So all the best to the Super Eagles. Uh, hopefully to get all three points and perhaps three goals as well against uh, the Leon Stars, uh, the uh, Liberian national uh, team. Uh, let's move on with the show. Still talking football. Uh, this time around in Europe. This record was always inevitable. Cristiano Ronaldo has now become the top scorer in men's international football after scoring two late goals against uh, Ireland. Uh, very, very heartbreaking outcome for the Irish, uh, but it is what it is. Cristiano Ronaldo uh, scoring two goals to take his tally to 111. is now the top scorer, more than Ali Dyer, uh, who used to own that particular record. Uh, for a long time. There's also Mukhtar Dahiri as well, too, and Frank Pushkash, of course, the fa famous uh, Pushkash is there as well, Godfrey, Chitalu, Hussein, Saeed, Pele, and Ronaldo's greatest rival, Lionel Messi is on 76 goals. Uh, Gide, your Ronaldo, like I said, inevitable record. It was always going to be uh, was always going to be a matter of when, not if. Exactly. Mm. He keeps reinventing. It's himself. ridiculous. He's never, exactly. He, he has never... You, if you doubt him at, his, at your own period, yeah. because he, he keeps, like I said, he keeps reinventing himself. He's broken all records all that he gets. All This records. is the last one. As he, as he ages, you just ask yourself, is there anything mm. that is pretty difficult for this uh, man to do? Mm. Because most times... Um, you know, you you don't even look at when you talk about Ronaldo. Age is the least that comes to no. your mind because he's capable of hurting you. Because yeah, this is how the game yesterday. Um, after Alan drew the first blood, he was always a, a, a tormentor in chief in the box. Mm. So I wasn't shocked after the first after his first goal equalized, uh, got another one. Another Fantastic, winner. very goal. late, late goal. So yeah. he's always been saving the blushes of uh, his goal. team, and mm. uh, I'm not surprised that he broke that record yesterday. No but surprises. there's still more. Of I course. know you still want to go to the World Cup. Yeah, of course. That's why. That's why this is the World Cup qualifiers, exactly. and that's why he's trying he to get Portugal there uh, uh, as a uh, as a matter of. And don't forget that it might it might look it might look as if it's the taller that, but uh, I know he's still on his menu. He's always one of his, his dream is mm. to win the World Cup. Yeah, why not? Mm. Uh, Portugal are a very good side with fantastic players. But uh, back to you, Ireland were on the cusp, they were on the verge of a very famous victory. 
than Enzo Ronaldo? Well, I mean, you've got to spare um, a thought or two for the Irish. They were mm. so, so close, pulling off a very, very remarkable uh, result away from home. You must mm -hmm. said they were leading Portugal 1 0 up until the ninth minute. Uh, but I always knew that they were living dangerously because, um, like the 60th minute mark, um, the game wasn't only going on in their box. It was taking place, I mean, in their half. It was taking it place in, in the their box. box. <laughs> uh, they had very little appetite to venture forward. Even when they had opportunities for fast break for counter attacks, they just uh, didn't show any sort back. of an to the second. Uh, and I thought on a few occasions we had a decent enough opportunity because the Portuguese had committed virtually all their men um, into, you know, attack. But uh, the Irish thought one was good enough. But when you have a man like Ronaldo on the pitch, one is never good enough. And mm -hmm. so it proved. Uh, Portuguese just kept thumping it in the box, knowing that they have um, a fantastic uh, a footballer who um, is as good with his head as he is with his, with his feet. And mm -hmm. two-headed goals late on. Um, broke Irish hats and um, secured victory for, for uh, Portugal. The goals were very identical, crosses yep. from the right side of, of, of the box, and um, he, he just leapt above everyone else, positioned himself fundamentally. His positioning is excellent, written of mm -hmm. the game, excellent, mm -hmm. always has been. But also, we put 10 footballers in the same position. Um, they probably just do enough to get it on target, but yeah. he not to get it on target, he puts it in the corner where it's so difficult for the goalkeeper to reach. He's done this many, many times in his career. Um, it's, it's almost you know, second nature. He does it on autopilot. He doesn't have to mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Once he gets his head to the ball, it's a goal. Even in the first league game of the season that he played for UV against Bologna, I think, was 1-1. Um, he came in mm -hmm. late on. And there was a, a, a cross by Federico Chiesa delivered that he put his head to. And um, he planted into the back of the net uh, for what should have been the winner before VR chopped it up. So yep. Ronaldo keeps going strong. If you look at him when he took off his shirt, that's the body of a 21-year-old right <laughs> 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 Incredibly well. Um, yeah. The other day, Patrick Tivra was talking about how it must be so difficult to live in Ronaldo's household because mm. you are only going to be eating you know, salads. Um, <laughs> that, that's the extent of his, of his discipline. And um, yeah. I can see him play play on into his 40s. Ask yourself, Tyler, yep. when was the last time Ronaldo got in there? Mm. I can't remember. I mean, I can't remember. despite his advancing age, uh, he's still very, very Absolutely. durable. Very durable. Yeah, yeah. I must say. I must so say that. He faces himself, picks his mm. moment. Like yesterday's game, for instance, um, in the past, Ronaldo would have been dropping deep, uh, getting more touches, trying to dictate the pace trying to run at people and beat men. He doesn't do all of that anymore. He doesn't care for those anymore. He just stays in the box, stays in areas where he can affect the game most. Mm -hmm. And then, usually, look at his contribution, especially at the international level. Even for Juve, his goals have been arriving in the last 15 minutes of games when the opposition is but, tiring out. That's, but, that's where he really switches on in the mm, box. And his awesome. teammates know exactly what to do uh, so he, he these days scores one touch finishes, whether with the yeah. foot or with the head. Yeah. Um, he knows exactly what sort of finish to apply to any sort of assist yeah. that he but, gets. Uh, and that's but, uh, going to be scoring goals in the next three, four years. Well, we're talking about Cristiano Ronaldo, the incredible feats achieved yesterday, uh, becoming the top scorer in men's international football. And he has been reacting to that particular uh, achievement. He says, and I quote, I'm so happy, not only because I beat the record, uh, but for the special moments, that we've had. Two goals at the end of the game it was so tough, but I have to appreciate what the team did. We believed until the very end from all of the records that I have broken during my career. Unfortunately, there have been a few. This is one that's very special for me and is certainly on the shelf of the achievements that make me truly proud. Cristiano Ronaldo, arguably one of the greatest of all time. But are your concluding thoughts on this man before we let you go? Um, in the next three, four seasons. Um, clearly, you know, he sets new tasks for himself now after joining Manchester United. Right. The task at the minimum would be to get them the Premier League title that they haven't won in years. Um, that United team is not going to win the Champions League within the time that Ronaldo is there, clearly. But if he gets them the United, I mean, to get them the Premier League title again, 
in his time there, maybe this season, next season, or the one after, uh, he would have cemented um, his place among the, you know, the greats, the greats. For, that, for, for mm. United and for, for the Premier League as a whole. So, an incredible player, um, the international goal scoring record that he's just broken and set um, will take some time to be broken. If you look at the list, um, Messi is probably the only, and Lewandowski are the only active players who mm. are about 40 goals um, that's, short that's of so him. far away. And I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think either of them is going to score another 40 international goals before they retire. So True. Ronaldo's record will probably stand um, until such a time when maybe the Mbappes and the Erling Haaland um, would have racked up centuries of um, caps and um, pray for the sort of longevity that Ronaldo has enjoyed uh, to be able to make an attempt at breaking that record. It's going to take something superhuman to achieve mm -hmm. 111 goals in, in international football. It's not club football. That's, um, that's a figure that a lot of strikers don't even achieve over the course career. of their career playing football. You know, so it's an incredible achievement. Uh. And congratulations to him. Congratulations to Cristiano Ronaldo. Take a bow wherever you are. Take a bow to uh, Badaki today for joining us on Sport This Morning. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Pat. Cheers. All right, still talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. His ne next task, obviously, is uh, his return to Old Trafford, uh, which is, uh, uh, is officially ready. And uh, Harry Maguire, the captain of the team, is understandably very delighted with his return to the team. Yeah, of course, it's amazing. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm away with England at the moment, so my focus on, is on the game tomorrow. But for him to sign for, back for the club and um, for me, the, the greatest player to play the game. So, no, it's amazing to have him at, um, at the club and um, I'm sure he's going to have a huge impact on and off the field and, and many players can look and learn and, and improve. And then, obviously, he's going to improve our team as well with, with his goal-scoring record. So, no, it's, it's amazing to have him at the club and I'm looking forward to meeting him in a, in a few days. In a few days, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo got uh, yellow uh, for taking off his shirt after scoring that dramatic win against Ireland. So, he's suspended for the next game. So, perhaps, how he can report early for duty at Old Trafford. Uh, Austin, back to you before we let you go. Cristiano Ronaldo, what do you have to say on this guy? I know you, you probably uh, exhausted all of the uh, superlatives on him already. I know, I know. It keeps creating wow moments, you know. Mm. I have to confirm that uh, we should give him the respect that he deserves, you know. Arguably, one of the greatest we've seen in the game. And uh, for breaking that record, you know, when he, when he called it at the Euros, yes, we knew he was going to go ahead to break it, you know. And Cristiano Ronaldo, at 36 tire, doing all of these things that he's doing, you know, Manchester United and the fans here in the UK, they are already, you know, buzzing with excitement. They cannot wait for C. Ronaldo to put on that red shirt again. And they know that because of the sort of passion this guy has for the for the sport, you know, we're, we're sure that he's going to light up the English Premier League once more. And this is how to get into it. This is how to announce himself. So, once again, take about Cristiano Ronaldo. Deserves all our respect. It's so sad that each time we talk about him, we want to mention Messi. But when he gives us a C. Ronaldo moment, yeah. we should respect him. Absolutely. Oh, what a way to end it. Austin, thank you for your time as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully we can do this again very soon. Thank you so much, Tayo. Always a delight to be on the show. Thank you. All right. Before we go, uh, back to you, uh, Gide. Let's take a look at what the papers are saying. Uh, very interesting uh, stories. Obviously dominated uh, uh, with uh, the World Cup qualifier against uh, Liberia tomorrow. A cement to Nigerian says... Uh, Liberia will fall. Uh, if Liberia are to fall tomorrow, then he needs to deliver a couple of goals, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the expectations are high. You, you heard it, Nigerians. I uh, don't won't, won't be patient, especially Lagos, Lagos fans, fans will be expecting um, the, the stars to shine mm -hmm. tomorrow. Exactly, all of them. Um, of course, they're all in camp uh, except for one, and we know yeah. for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be all out supporting, rooting for them tomorrow. Indeed, them uh, to deliver. Sports and Life, that's the paper we're taking a look at. Uh, Fatty gets uh, Messi's iconic number 10 shirt. Uh, very interesting, the young star, uh, which a lot is expected of uh, taking that jersey. Uh, Messi uh, haven't left for PSG. Mbappe will join Real Madrid for free next summer. 
after signing a pre-contract in January. That's what the papers are saying. Uh, that, that I just hope they can win the Champions League with this uh, tactic and be, that and, they have. And it'll be all worth it, goes, it right? That could be a valedictory gift yeah. that he's going to give to PSG before he yeah. leaves. Um, I know that uh, the PSG has got money, so mm. maybe that's why they're reading up, they're reading up or that they're selling fine. him. They're not desperate selling him. They, could, they would allow him to go for free, but at least... I, Show something. Kide, I don't care it. how mm -hmm. much money you have. Mm -hmm. 200 million euros is a lot, a lot for anybody but, but, but because to when let they have, go. I, I think the reason they just want to see, you know, the, you know, when you have money, there's a lot of fantasies that yeah, you yeah, to yeah, dream yeah. of. That goes <laughs> on your head. So I think that's what's going on in the heads of those who run in that oh club. My they just want to see Mbappe, uh, Messi. Neymar, Messi play together. Hmm. And I hope that this. You should we will give them um, that thing they've always wanted to win. That's mm. the Champions League now. Mm. They've conquered uh, the league on. And so right times. now they should yeah. do something. That's the uh, holy the grail. We'll see if it's going to be all worth it at the end of the current season. Still on sports in life. Uh, Man City contract. Uh, Edison stays on till 2026. Uh, they're tying down their goalkeeper uh, for another five years. Manchester United make Haaland priority. Next summer, that'll be interesting. Tottenham release a rare on a free transfer. Fury wants to fight Joshua in September. Uh, Central African Republic and Cape Verde playing a one all draw. Spots in sun before we go on the show. Still on the cement, says uh, is escaping Napoli sanction. That's not related to the World Cup qualifier. Um, Eagles players to get bumper bonus. That's for the World Cup qualifier, definitely. Yana Cho in deadly form for the Liberia match tomorrow. Apparently, he's been scoring a lot of goals in training. Hopefully, he can translate that to match day at Teslin Balogun Stadium. He's also Zori joining April. That's in club football. And Busquets, how about take Barcelona pay courts? Uh, Barcelona's uh, financial troubles are well documented. GD, many thanks uh, for coming on the show again. It's always, it's always a pleasure to be here, tired doing this with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys uh, for watching as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Tyre Salam. See you again tomorrow.